So in my police interceptor utility, I do not have a horn. You can see nothing happens when I push on the horn button. So we're gonna get to the bottom of why. So if your horns are not working, the first place to check is the front of the vehicle. Make sure, as simple as it sounds, that, you're, that you have a horn installed. So here, directly under the hood, I can see both pieces of the horn. Uh, each of these makes a different tone for the horn, so there should be two. And I can see that the, uh, the connector is attached to the horn. This is the, the horn side of the connector, and then this is the harness side right here. So I can see that the horns are in place and connected to the vehicle's harness. So that I can get a better look at this horn, I'm going to go ahead and remove these screws that are holding the grill in place so that I can pry the grill away a little bit. They're just 10 millimeter headed screws. And then a couple snaps here. So the screws are out, the panel is off, and so now I can spring out the grill a little bit. I can see that wiring harness going from the horn to behind the grill over here. Let me see where that goes. Goes through there. So that's, that's this harness here. It's going down. So I don't see any obvious issues with the wiring harness. So I'm gonna try disconnecting it and checking the voltage here to see if by chance I'm getting 12 volts already and the horn is just not working. I did try uh, turning the key on and pressing the, the, the horn button to see if I was getting voltage to this horn, thinking that perhaps maybe the horn was just defective. Uh, that was not the case. At least I'm not getting voltage to the horn. As you can see here, it just stays at zero no matter what I do. So I looked and there is a horn relay power fuse. It says fuse 15. And so this is in the manual. Here is the fuse box in the engine compartment. So I'm just gonna look for fuse 15. So it's that yellow fuse right there. Get a set of needle nose pliers. And it looks like that fuse is good. Well, that was, it was worth a try, worth checking. So the fuse should be good. In addition to there being a fuse for the horn in the front engine compartment fuse box here, there is also a relay for the horn. So I decided to check that. It is uh, in slot 39. It's this slot right here where my finger is. And when I, I checked this relay, it did actually turn out to be bad. From what I can tell, this relay is not functioning properly. But unfortunately, that's, that does not appear to be my problem. Uh, or at least not my only problem, because this relay here is identical, and it's for the air conditioner circuit. And it's actually damaged physically, but electrically it seems to work fine. And I installed it into the horn circuit, and that did not fix anything. So I'm going to put this relay, the one that appears to be functioning, in the horn socket, because I want to be able to have this working for testing. But um, that does not appear, that did not appear to be my problem. So, so this one is bad and I will be replacing it, um, for now. And I'm actually going to replace both of these because that one is physically damaged. So in this relay box, one other thing that is good about opening this up is that it allows you to test the horn circuit downstream of this, this point. So with a, with a relay here, the relay is essentially a switch, and it's supposed to be that if that switch closes, the horn honks. 
And so we can simulate that by just closing it with a wire. So I, I figured out which two terminals uh, need to be closed. It's in my view here, top right and bottom left. And you can see that the horn does honk when you do that. So that's good because that means that we can verify that the horn works and that the circuit downstream of this, that is the, the harness in the front bumper and in the front of the engine compartment, all of that is hooked up correctly and the fuse is good. You know, everything, everything in this compartment is probably good. So I'll just test it again. Okay. So I'm gonna put my relay back in and move back to working uh, inside the vehicle. Anytime you're going to be working inside the steering wheel or anywhere else where there are airbags, you should disconnect the battery and let it sit for a while to make sure that the there's no charge built up inside of the airbag that could um, essentially set off the airbag uh, while you are moving it. So I disconnected my battery last night. It sat overnight and now I think I should be uh, good to go to work inside the steering wheel. So now that the battery has been disconnected and uh, I let it set overnight, I can safely work inside the steering wheel. So the way that you get in the steering wheel here, or specifically remove this airbag, which is what works the horn switch, is to stick a screwdriver or Allen key or, or you know some sort of flat-ended metal stick inside a hole on either side of the steering column and that will essentially release some springs that hold this in place and then this can just pop off so here's behind the steering wheel and now i'm going to start looking for any issues I can find with the horn switch or the wiring. I don't know if all vehicles are like this, but in this Explorer, uh, there actually is no horn switch from what I can tell. It looks like that when you press on the airbag, what it actually does is it moves this metal floating panel here, this stamped piece, and it then touches the steering column back here. And when those two pieces of metal touch, it must complete the horn circuit. So it's actually pretty, you know, pretty simple that there's no actual switch. The the metal plates here, this cast piece back here, and then this stamped piece, those two pieces of metal touching are the switch. So when your horn feels like it's floating, it is. It's th These two plates are separated by springs. And when you push them together, it closes the circuit. So I'm, and this is just guesswork, but I'm going to guess that that red wire there that's, uh, that's on that screw terminal is half of the circuit. And then this blue wire that is on that terminal there, on that screw, is the other half of the circuit. And when you press these two panels, you'll hear the continuity meter start beeping. Let me push down here. So that's just like you're pushing on your horn. You push these two panels together. So that beeping would be just like your horn. So there's no switch in here to go bad, which is which is good, I suppose. Um, but there's no um, there's no clear reason why the horn you know would not be working either. So still a mystery why the horn doesn't work but at least, you know, we're verifying that everything else is okay. But I am going to start probing around to and seeing, hey, can I, can I find uh, where there is power and where there is not? Because somewhere in here, there has to be a, a, a disconnection in the harness. So the next place we're going to inspect is actually underneath the steering column. So I want to pop this panel off and look at the wiring behind it to see if I can uh, find a spot where the harness has been disconnected for the horn. If the horns are installed up front and this button is working in the steering wheel, then 
the harness somewhere between the horn and the steering wheel has been disconnected. The right side of this panel is already off. I'm going to see if I can pop the left side off. Okay, so there my panel came off. So I did not see any wires that were disconnected down here under the steering wheel. You can see mine's pretty pretty clean inside there, and the harnesses that are there to me look complete. And even looking up at the bottom of the steering wheel, I don't see anything that looks like it's been tampered with or cut. So my next step is to look under the, the center of the dash here, and I think the best way to do that is to pop these side panels off, these lower side panels. So this one is already popped off a little bit. So I'm just going to try gently pulling this rearward. There we go. Okay, so those side panels are off. They're at least spread out to the side and now I can see there's a screw right there and a screw right there. And I think that's what holds this face on. I got those two screws out. They were 10 millimeter heads. So now I'm just going to try wiggling this. I think I can, I think I can see some tabs. There we go. Or just one tab. Okay. So now the dash is opened up here and I can start looking for a disconnected wire that could be supplying the horn. So I did not find anything in the, basically in the center dash there. Uh, so as you can see, I completely removed this side panel from the center of the dash. Uh, it was just two more snaps that were in those rectangular holes. So those that just pulled out to the side. And I just wanted a better look down there to make sure that I wasn't missing anything. Up here, I opened this up by removing the metal panel that was behind the plastic panel. So the metal panel was held on by four screws that had 10 millimeter heads. And so I removed those and then the metal panel lifted off. And I still don't see any obvious culprits. I went down to the, this connector at the base of the steering column again. And uh, the only thing that I feel like I really know for sure is based um, on Ford's modifier guides for the police department they say that that green loop right there is the horn circuit you know it is the signal wire for the horn circuit and they put that loop there so that the police can tap into it and that green wire i think goes right there to the back of this connector so it should be if you ground that wire that the horn honks and so i just probed it with a piece of mig wire and i connected it to a test light here. So if I ground this, it does honk the horn. So good news is, is I think that means that everything between this connector and the horn, so that's the body control module, that relay up in the front fuse box, the fuse, the harness going to the bumper, all that appears to be all right. It's just something between this connector and the horn that that is failing. And I also tried connecting my test light here to, to the horn, to this bracket and to the casting up here and grounding that. And it did, it did appear to be grounded. And here's what that looks like. So I have my test light plugged into 12 volt power on the OBD port. And if I touch it to the steering wheel casting up here, the steering column, it, it flows current. So that means that the 12 volt is able to find a path to ground. If I touch it to this plate, the, the top plate here, it does not find a path to ground. But if I push on the plate, as you would when you push the horn, it finds a path to ground. So I think the, the steering column is grounded, but it must be that the signal wire that green wire 
that goes from the base of the steering column up the steering column to that plate, which is that blue wire. There is a break in that wire somewhere in the steering column. It does have to go through the clock spring, which is kind of a rotary union. And so it could be that that clock spring is bad. So eventually I might get to where I, I replace the clock spring, but right now I'm gonna keep looking for any other obvious breaks in that line. And I've been probing around trying to find continuity between the, what I'll say is the horn switch, which are these two metal plates that touch up here. Trying to find continuity between those plates and this connector that is down at the base of the steering column. So this is a 22 pin connector. It only has about a dozen or 15 wires um, in it. It's not using all the pins, but I cannot get continuity between any of those wires and the metal plates up here. This blue wire here seems to go into that connector, which makes me think that it should go down here but we don't have any matching blue wire and I don't get any, any continuity between this connector and that connector down there. So basically I still don't understand what the wiring is up here and I'm just gonna try to sort that out by taking more of these panels off and further uh, hunt for a break in the horn circuit somewhere. I got this off, this is the lower shroud off the steering column and to get it off, there were just three screws and then uh, some snaps. Oh, and I also, I have this uh, adjustable foot pedal switch here. So I had to uh, disconnect that connector and just uh, pop that out. It was just a single, single spring tab there. So now I can set that aside and I'll do more probing underneath the steering column here to see where, um, where I have continuity and therefore help me understand where I, where I do not have continuity, where the break in my circuit is. So we already tested earlier the green wire coming from this harness here. If I grounded it, it honked the horn. Going through this plug on the outside of this plug, or I should say on the steering wheel side of this plug, the wire, that same wire, appears to still be green. And if I ground it, whoop, well, it just popped out there, but if I ground it, it, uh, it would honk the horn. So this connection, this plug, is good. So that green wire then goes up and goes underneath the steering column up in there. And you can see it better than I can. It goes right up in there. So I'm gonna try to probe something on the other end of that harness up there. I could not get my probe up to that connector that you saw just a moment ago, but I am going to assume for now that that harness is okay. That, that you know, one foot of cable is intact going up the steering column into that connector. Once it goes, once the line goes into that connector, it then uh, essentially passes through a module. So that connector is plugged into a module. Once it goes through that module, it then goes through the clock spring, which is this uh, rotating piece right back here. That clock spring is just a coil of ribbon cable that allows all of these cables to pass through the rotating steering wheel or to the rotating steering wheel. And then uh, this connector right there is plugged into the clock spring. So if I don't have anything up here, and I assume I do in the back of the module, then that means either that module is bad, either I have a, a discontinuity inside that module or a discontinuity inside the clock spring. The clock springs are known to fail, especially just with a lot of use or over time, that ribbon cable can fatigue and break, but I will pull that off and check continuity through the clock spring because that is now suspect number one. So to take the steering wheel off and get to the clock spring, I just need a T50 Torx bit on the end of a ratchet. 
And this uh, might take two hands. So I, I'm gonna set the camera down, but I'm just gonna try loosening that big screw right there in the middle, that one right there. It's a big screw, but it actually should not be very tight. So it should come off um, just by hand with a, with a ratchet like this. The screw was a little more stubborn um, than I could manage by myself. So I had my dad hold the steering wheel from rotating so that I could have both hands on the um, on the ratchet. Once it broke free, the screw here seems to be coming out very easily. That screw came out. Looks like it had a, a little bit of thread locker on there. So now there's nothing um, holding the steering wheel on. Yeah, and you can see it's very, uh, very, very loose. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this connector here. So now this connector stays with the steering wheel and this harness here for the airbag stays with the clock spring. So there we go. So the steering wheel is completely off. Here's the clock spring. So I want to, so I have my steering wheel straight. I pulled in, I pulled in the, the, the shop here and I had my steering wheel straight. And so I want to keep this clock spring straight like this. So, so this is uh, essentially um, the neutral position, I'll call it. Now, some of these have a, a window or a little mark um, to let you know that it's in the neutral position but I don't see anything on this at the moment, at least not from this side. So I'm just gonna go get a piece of tape and tape this so that this does not spin. Because what you don't want to do is have this spin around and then you put the steering wheel back on and the steering wheel is still in the neutral position because your wheels are straight, but this will not be in the neutral position. This will be clocked one way or the other and uh, you'll end up overextending the cable in one direction or another when you turn the wheel. So. I'm just gonna put a piece of tape on here to keep this in the neutral position. Now I'm gonna take these screws out that are holding it, holding the clock spring in place. And on mine, they are a T10. So uh, it's the smallest size in this set here is a T10. So there were a total of four screws. And then this clock spring just popped off. That module there is the other component that could be bad here. But now that I have this off, I'm gonna to go to a workbench and just test continuity between all of these pins and the output pins up here. So just at first glance, there are two rows of seven pins, so that would be 14. And down here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If I count correctly, ten pins. But then we also have eight pins there. So um, and then, of course, we have four pins here. So there's 10 and 8, which would be 18. And there's 14 and 4, which would be 18. So I'm going to assume that these are for the airbag. And I'm going to focus on these pins first. After all this investigating, we have finally solved the mystery. We have found what is preventing my horn from working, and it's this clock spring. So this clock spring has 18 circuits going through it, like we highlighted a moment ago, and three of those are bad. Three of the wires that are going through this rotating component uh, have been broken inside of this component. And I'll show you how I, I went about evaluating that. So I used the uh, a multimeter to check continuity going through the, the clock spring, and then uh, as I went, I realized that uh, I, I really need to keep track of, of this because there's 18 circuits to check. And so I drew it out in um, in a diagram like this, where on the right side of this page, I essentially have uh, what I'll say is the, the steering column side of the clock spring. So these are the, the, uh, the pins that are going uh, down the steering column towards like the body control module. And then on the left side of the page, it's the connectors that are on the steering wheel side of the clock spring. So basically, uh, these the two sides of the page are connected. 
Um, so you can see I, I started here on the steering column side, numbered the pins 1 through 18 um, on the connectors, and then I essentially just used a multimeter to figure out where each of those pins was going on the steering wheel side. And you can see there's three circles here that never got labeled, and those were circuits 1, 9, and 10. Now know that uh, these pin numbers are not from Ford. Uh, these are just my pin numbers that I arbitrarily assigned um, so that I could keep track. So I was missing pins 1, 9, and 10. And looking at the pattern of the other numbers here, you can figure out which, uh, where pins 1, 9, and 10 were supposed to be. So 1 would have been uh, the circle in the bottom right there. And then 10 would have been the circle in the top left. And then in the bottom left, that empty circle would have been nine. So then the next question is, is well, are any of those connected to the horn? Well, the, the easiest way to um, identify that is to look back at the steering wheel. And so if we look at the steering wheel here, we can see the connector that, that uh, was plugged into the clock spring and we can we can pretty easily see where the horn actually is on that uh, on that connector. So again, this is the connector on the clock spring. And if we look at this connector here, we can see the blue wire is what is connected to this floating mechanism, this floating horn switch. It's this blue wire right there, and that blue wire is connected to what would be essentially the central top pin in this connector. It's just the left of top center. And so if we look at this diagram, left of top center is that one right there. So that would have been pin 10 in my diagram. So that would have been this circuit right there. So it is open. So one, you know, we've confirmed here that one of the broken circuits is supposed to be for the horn. So then how do we, you know, just further verify that the clock spring is the only issue? Well, we could just jumper that pin to ground. So this is the same pin. So in that drawing, you know, this was one through 10, even though it's, uh, I drew it um, sort of like it was on the clock spring, really, uh, it's these sa same 10 pins right here. And so this would be pin 10 in that drawing because the 10 pins on the clock spring plug into these 10 sockets. So all we have to do is short this pin to ground, and that would tell us if the horn works. Um, really, what the important thing there to learn is that it would tell us if the module here uh, is good, because if you remember, the two things that we had narrowed it down to uh, that could have been the root cause of the problem would be a bad clock spring or a bad module or both. Um, this module here is uh, the only other component that we had not yet tested. So by shorting that to ground, we'll be able to test that. And I'm going to do that now. So I just connected the battery back up so that I could test this. So I have a piece of welding wire here that was flattened on one end. So I'll just stick it in pin 10. You can see it is in pin 10. And then I'm just going to ground it against the steering column because that's what the horn normally does. And there you go. So everything else in the circuit appears to test out fine. Um, the the horn switch, what we now know as you know the horn switch, is just those floating plates that make contact. So the, that component um, appears to be fine. The uh, everything between this module and the horn we've now confirmed is fine, and that means that uh, all I have to do is replace that clock spring and uh, everything should be good to go. And I might even gain functionality on my steering wheel because I do have a couple of other buttons on the steering wheel that do not currently work. And I thought it was just because it was like a special police package that, uh, that had reprogrammed some of the, the steering wheel functions. So anyway, so this component here is what I need to replace. I'm going to be getting uh, as exact of a replacement as possible um, because these... Uh, clock springs vary a lot, model to model. The most important uh, thing is that you really need to make sure that you can hook your airbag up properly, because that's really what these were originally invented for, is to make sure that you can connect uh, your airbag to your vehicle's electrical system. 
So that is the number one safety concern here is that if you do not get the right one, your airbag might not work. Um, so really make sure that you get the right clock spring. Okay. And uh, they can be a little bit pricey or they can be very cheap. So uh, don't be don't be too worried about replacing it. Um, depending on your model, it might be $30. It might be $200, but uh, you really need your airbag to work. So make sure to get the right one. Probably the, the trickiest part of all this was... Um, just doing the investigation under the dash, removing all the panels, removing this shroud around the steering wheel, um, you know, because that takes a little bit of uh, time and a delicate touch so that you don't break plastic molding. But overall, um, I think this was a, a great lesson because now I, I pretty thoroughly understand all the components in a horn circuit and how to troubleshoot it, and I hope you do too. So um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. And if you have any questions or comments on my process here, please let me know below. Otherwise, see you next time.